So what I discovered was that the D itself, although it is a growth factor for the bacteria, did not bring back the right bacteria. The IBS that they still had at two years, their lack of weight loss. So they were exercising, but they did not lose weight. This person brings me this stuff about the B vitamins, B5. And I start to read the review articles about the bees. The authors at that time, about 2013, are saying, you know, thiamine has a food source and a colonic bacteria source, riboflavin, colonic bacteria source and a food source. Niacin, the same. Every single one of them has poop bacteria source and a food source. So I happened by accident to pick up B100 and I gave it to a set of patients over one week only and with 400 milligrams of B5, which is the way it sits on the shelf, the way it was published in this book, the recommended dose for B5 was 400 milligrams. And by the end of the week, my restless legs was much worse. I was actually taking 500 milligrams of B5. And my patients started to come back and say, this stuff here, this panathenic acid, this nearly killed me. I was so agitated that I only took it for two days and I couldn't sleep at all. I immediately had insomnia. It turns out coenzyme A is ubiquitous in all the food. But panathenic acid is not. And there are all these articles from about the 1940s to the 1970s that really question that whole dogmatic statement. And in the last three years, there are now starting to be more and more articles published about five deficiency states in the brain that were found by accident. Okay, so one, when I was doing this, I was just completely blown away because I was like, this is like this D stuff where the literature is completely wrong. But that's what we've been told. And since we were told well, doctors don't need to think about vitamins or really pay attention, then we've actually had this move towards, I'm going to doctor myself because the, the doctors don't know. So one, if you're profoundly interested in sleep, which is me, this one chemical, B5, when it's next to D, those two together make a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. That neurotransmitter turns out to be very important. It runs paralysis in sleep. It runs our ability to transition through the phases of sleep. And it also runs our inflammatory system. It's not the only one. There are many, many layers to that, but it has its own way of affecting the immune system. It's called the anti, the acetylcholine anti-inflammatory pathway. It affects multiple areas of the brain. And there are all these primary science articles that are documenting that ADHD, which also started to be epidemic in the eighties is related to lack of acetylcholine in the frontal lobes. And that autism has acetylcholine deficiency. There's a dose response to this one B vitamin. And the only thing I remembered from medical school was if you give one B vitamin, you should give all of them. There's an article that beautifully done in a different way it shows that every single one of those four phyla makes at least one B and requires another B from one of its buddies. That was probably understood a little better in the 30s when they made these arbitrarily calling all of them eight Bs because they were all purified from the same stuff. And so I started to tell my patients, look, I'm thrilled that you're, all your pain went away and your sleep is better. But if it comes back again, I want you to stop that B100, okay? Because I'm thinking, so there is now plenty of literature that supports this idea one, the first article that supports in humans that D is a growth factor establishing the less inflammatory microbiome was published in 2020 in response to COVID. Then now there are multiple articles that are coming out showing this particular species makes this B vitamin. And this other group published in the same year I published the second article, which was when D goes low, the microbiome goes bad, and that this is linked to heart disease, Alzheimer's disease, inflammatory diseases, this way of looking at it explodes all the recommendations because it means if you made the recommendations in a population that had a normal human microbiome, that is really not the same as trying to use this to heal people. And then I just started to do D with them and they would be back within two years with joint pain and bad things. So it became obvious to me that D by itself does not produce an illness in my view. You get a low D of 35 every spring, okay? In April, you start to go out, you start to be in the sun. So the D was meant to go up and down. So maybe 35 for a month is no big deal. You do not lose your microbiome until the D is down in the 30s and below over sustained for years. And I make that conclusion, not because I measured it, but because the, the reaction in my clients is such that if you're healthy, you really don't have any of these complaints. But if you come into me with these complaints, I never really can get you fully fixed with just D. You really must get the microbiome back. When that microbiome is normal, so you have to take the B50, which is what I'm recommending now, 
Because remember, I was on D for two years and then started to develop problems. That means I used up my B5 stores. There's all sorts of dogma about these are water soluble. We don't have stores. That's all wrong. We have documented B12 stores, documented C stores, documented B5 and B and B6 stores. There are scientific studies that really show that we have stores of these. When you don't have as much sickness, and that's the only way you can really measure the level of deficiency. How long has this person had an abnormal microbiome? How long have they been deficient in these hundred things that you're wondering about, just like I am? The clinical history is what will tell you that as a clinician. Unfortunately, most of the blood levels of all of these minerals and B, the B vitamins, they're worthless. They're totally worthless. They have no relevance to what that person is experiencing in the nervous system. That doesn't mean it's filled all the deficiency states yet. So at that point, I personally wasn't taking multivitamins, but that is a pivotal part of my program now because you really do need to supplement all these things. And iron is another big, big player in sleep and in many areas. Now we have articles that show that if you don't have the right bugs, your body really has lost a couple of the pieces that are the messaging system between the brain, do I need iron up here, and the intestinal lining. Similarly, zinc, copper, all of those minerals that have these charges, they're very very incorporated into the bugs. If you don't have the right species, you can't do it.